A reading from the Gospel of John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Today's gospel is yet again another continuation of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. At this point, as we noted last week, the fish are no longer discussed at all, and the story fully shifts into Jesus as being the bread of life. It is almost fully developed, and the climax of this long oration occurs in next week's gospel, which you'll often hear on Corpus Christi Sunday. However, after reading through yet another week of Jesus talking about himself as the bread of life, I couldn't help but notice all of the first-person usage of I am this and I am that. Two things occurred to me. First, other than one exception with Pontius Pilate in Mark's gospel, Jesus never talks about himself in the first person in the gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. In these three gospels, you'll never find Jesus talking about himself, but rather his attention is centered in the kingdom of God. So when I read John's gospel, it almost seems like Jesus is rather self-absorbed and making it all about himself. As a result, I ask the question, why does John have Jesus talking in this way? Furthermore, my second observation is how Jesus' sayings in Mark, Matthew, and Luke are, by and large, much shorter and to the point. Whereas in John's gospel, Jesus is constantly talking in long orations that never seem to end, to the point where I often ask myself, is he ever going to shut up? So what is going on here? Clearly, John is going in a different direction than the other three gospels. That fact has been recognized very early on in the first century church. From the very onset, it was often known as the spiritual gospel. If you rank the four gospels in regards to the level of theological sophistication, John's gospel wins by a landslide, especially when you hear all of its beautiful poetry and rich symbolism. And the proof is in the pudding because if you really pay attention to most of our church hymns, they most often have Christian composers using John's gospel because it's so poetic. So, if we understand John's gospel in light of its spiritual context when compared to how Jesus communicates in Mark, Matthew, and Luke, I can't help but hear all of Jesus' I am sayings as a statement of belief from John's community. Every time I hear Jesus say, I am the bread of life, or I am the way, the truth, and the life, 
or I am the vine and you are the branches. I hear them as how John's community saw and related to Jesus. It's almost like how we say the Nicene Creed each Sunday when we start with, I believe in one God. So if we read today's gospel in this vein, here is a short Johannine Creed that stems from it. I believe, Jesus, that you are the bread that came down from heaven. I believe that you are the bread of life. And by feeding on you, we are made whole for all eternity. And the bread that you give us is the life for the whole world.